you hear me? Yeah, I can hear myself, so I guess you can hear me. Thanks, Sergey, for the warm intro. And I'm very, very excited to be here. Really, it's such a great venue, and I'm so grateful you all came to see me. Thank you. <laughs> me and Douglas. <laughs> so I'm going, I'm going to start off by saying hi. Clicker should be working. Um, I'm going to start off by saying hi, I'm Serge, I'm a front-end developer like you, and I'm also a family man, and this is, this, this is my beautiful wife Abishag, my little daughter Mira, and my oldest son Shalev, and <laughs> my wife is also expanding, so I'm over thrilled with excitement here. Yeah. Thank you. And today, um, I'm not going to talk about JavaScript or WebMatch or not even management per se, but about people and relationships because my lecture is about team and leadership and I believe that people and relationships are actually the stuff that teams and leaderships are made of. And before I go any further, I would like for you to try to imagine yourself in the following situation. Yes, it's uh, my game. So you're a junior team leader, and you find yourself night after night for several weeks fixing somebody else's code. And it's another night like this, and you've got this new commit, and you're watching the diff, the diff of the code, and after a healthy face palm, like, oh, come on. What were you thinking? Your fingers itch to make a quick fix. So I would like to pause in this moment and to let you think about what would you do in this situation. Would you make a fix and push the code without anyone noticing? Or perhaps would you do something else? So I'll just, just let you think about that. I have a lot of time, 30 minutes to think about. Yeah, well, thumbs up. So for me, it was the aha moment of my career and as a team leader. And I would like to freeze here and to zoom in and to see and ask you perhaps what forces are present in this situation? What forces are battling each other? inside of you being this junior team leader. And I would argue that these forces are actually love and fear. And I would also argue that these are the basic forces in our lives that you can reduce all of our conflicts, all of the conflicts in our life, lives to these two basic um, forces or powers. And if you don't agree, I would be happy to have a debate over a beer after the lecture. I'm sure I'll win, so I have another beer. It's okay. And for now, I would like to concentrate on the darker corner over there, at the bottom, the fear. And I'd like to ask you, what are you afraid of being this junior team leader? You? And perhaps you're afraid that your supervision won't be perfect, that you won't spot a bug in the system, or the code, the code won't be 100%. And perhaps you're also afraid what other people may think about you, your management, or perhaps your peers and the team. It's not something to be taken lightly. Judgmental eyes over us, it's really scary. Perhaps you're afraid to let someone else do it his way. Or even more afraid to discover that his way was actually better than yours. I know, you're probably very, very sure that you're right and you have, you've, you've got it right. But perhaps in some aspects, the other way of doing things is actually better than yours. Perhaps the code is not prettier, but maybe it's faster, maybe it's more simple, maybe it's another way of doing things, which is also legit. And to re recognizing that, 
in some way is about losing control. And this is also a very, very scary thing to do. I have goosebumps, just think about that. Let go of control. And I think the most scariest part about losing control is what will happen afterwards. If I pass the torch to somebody else, if I let go, what will happen to me? Am I still going to be relevant? Who's... Nobody will listen to me. I will disappear. And this fear of becoming irrelevant, I think it's in the core of all the other fears. And I know because these are all my fears. <laughs> and I also know that you have them too, because I'm human and you're human. <laughs> I promise you I'm, I'm human, I'm not a robot. <laughs> uh, although my voice may sound like that. Uh, now, so I want, I want us to get back to our story and I want to arm you with some love weapons to fight those fears. And the first weapon I'm going to give you is confidence. That's right. Confidence is a very, very, very powerful tool. And confidence in our context is the, is the feeling that you can rely on somebody else to actually listen to you and to understand what you're saying and understand your way of doing things and then trusting the end result which is not so easy to do but trust may help you along the way and it's also the feeling the confidence that you can rely on your management to back you up making such decisions to back you up while delegating tasks and not having to do everything by yourself that's also a nice, warm, soothing feeling and you just have to have this feeling, this feeling of confidence because without it, I believe you can't make any progress because if you're going to move from point A to point B sometimes you don't have enough information to do this jump and you have like this void between these two points and making assumptions is building a bridge over these two points and you can't make assumptions if you don't have confidence so now when you have it, this confidence what if you could just let go that's right, let go not an easy thing but now you have this superpower of letting go. And you know what? You actually don't even need to let go because you know what? Control is a kind of illusion. And it's not yours to take anyway. So, because you can only control yourself. You can only act upon yourself. And you can only react to others. And that's actually also a very nice and soothing feeling too unless you're total control freak and <laughs> the nicest thing about letting go is that by doing that you can also let grow and by that I mean that after you did that and perhaps you just written up a quick email describing the problem and the suggestion to fix or what, what's wrong in your opinion in this code and you're, you're letting somebody else the chance to improve and to grow and by doing that you are also improving yourself as a team leader because now you've, you've stepped out of, out of your comfort zone and you're doing something new that you didn't do before and the team as a whole is also improving because now it's not dependent on one single person fixing everybody else's code all the time and the thing can also scale and grow and so that's very very good stuff and I want to stress a little semantics here pay attention to the phrasing, you're, you're letting grow because you're actually being half passive about it because you can't force someone into growing, you can't grow somebody like when you plant a seed, you just need to put water and it grows by itself. You can grow it. And the same is about other people. You can't grow them, you can only let them. 
So, well, we have these beautiful tools, powerful tools, love tools that we're armed with. And I believe that now we're feeling a little bit more confident. We can take it to the next level. Are you ready for our next level? The craziness. <laughs> and shit just happened. Someone on your team didn't deliver. And it starts as if the code must go to production tomorrow. And it's not ready. And everybody went home. <laughs> not great. So who's accountable? Is it you because you're the team leader, you're the one in charge? Maybe it's the person that went home, it's this project. How did it happen anyway without anyone knowing about it before? Doesn't matter because now you're in trouble. And if we are to freeze again, to freeze in this moment, you're probably guessing what we'll see again. We'll see again the two titans fighting. Love and fear, again. Perhaps in a more enthusiastic way now. And I would like to ask you again, what are your fears? What are you afraid of in this crisis? Which is a much more escalated story. And first things off, like you're just a mortal human being. You're afraid you have to cancel your plans. You had something planned off, and now it's all down the drain. You need to reschedule, and it's not nice, you need to stay and fix this. So, that's our first fear. Let's look, recognize it. Next one, perhaps you'll have to force someone, el someone else into this. Because perhaps the work can't be done by one person, so you just have to call someone else. And it's not a nice feeling to use authority on your friends, like it's being kind of aggressive. Um, at least for me, this is not what I sign off when being a team leader, and it's not necessarily good. And you're probably afraid that the project won't be delivered on time. And this is hell yeah, this is scary because the client has invested in a marketing campaign the next day and it's counting down, so you should be scared about that. And you're probably afraid that you'll make a bad choice, which is also very, very understandable because you don't seem to have too many right ones in this uh, story. And eventually, probably afraid that everything will collapse on your head, which I can sympathize with. So, uh, let's, get, let's get back again, and I'll give you some new weapons to fight it. And the first new weapon is boundaries! Yay! Boundaries! No! Why, why boundaries? We don't like boundaries! We don't like being told what to do. We don't like fences. Right? What to do? We're good people, we're free spirits. Nobody likes boundaries. But I'm not meaning like in the Stalin way of boundaries. It's actually like limits to confine and to define like scope and time, and eventually boundaries are good for you because without them, you can't even know that you're good, right? Because without anyone telling you what's bad, you will never know that you're good. So boundaries are a good thing. In our context, the boundary was clear. There's no way that we don't deliver <laughs> the ship up to production. Okay? There's no way, because we just have to do it, and this is like this little garden that protects us and defines us, and now we know what to do. Now I know that as a team, we have to deliver, no matter what, because this is our job. But we won't do that without respect. And I'm, as a person, when I treat others, um, I'd like to imagine little crowns above their heads because I think when, as, as much as you treat your time as precious and important, you should treat other people's time not at least as important as yours, not more. And by, by doing that, I think this, this is actually the only way that you can gain any respect by yourself. So this is really important. 
Well, back to the story, I don't feel that, like, constantly talking about other people, but what about me? Am I not human? Am I not a person? Have I got no feelings? Who's to empathize me? Oh, empathy. I almost forgot. Empathy is, is a great thing, amazing thing, and eventually empathy is about somebody else to tell you, it's okay, I know how you feel, uh, understand your point of view. And this recognition that we are human is crucial to, I don't know, to everything. And you can't really feel human if you can't recognize humanity in others. With everything, our feelings as humans and our fears. And if you can't do that, then you can't recognize yourself as a human being. And that is, my friends, very good material for psychologists. So, now that we have empathy, and I've given a phone call to a senior front-end uh, front developer in my team, and by him, him saying to me, okay, Serge, I know I feel you're going to tackle this, don't worry, we'll do what it takes, then I had support. Okay, and this is the last piece of the chain, support, because you just can't do it on your own. Okay, not on team. You have to have support. So, friends, what have you got here? These nice icons about team and about leadership. These are values. These things are values. Okay, these tools, love tools, are actually values that can help you in your job. And this is what I want you to take out from this lecture, okay? You can follow it right now. And because this is really, really what I want to say. And you can group them into team values and leadership values. And the interesting thing here is, see, that how, how little leadership values there are. Yeah, there's just like two. And I think this is because leadership is, is only about you, not about others. So, back to the concept of team. We're actually seeing by now that team has to do with values. Okay? It doesn't have to do with Git or with JavaScript or with even front end code. And it's interesting, because if it doesn't start there, then where does it start? And I think it starts right here, in a family. Just look at this beautiful family. White smiles, happy, beautiful bodies. Not all families are all the same, and it's okay. Some families are beautiful on the inside. And this is what really matters, because family is not about the looks, or how it, is, how it appears in society, it's about the, the core values inside. And, well, this is also the thing that distinguishes between good families and social services kind of families, I believe. And this is also what distinguishes between groups of people managing to work together and to the contrary of groups that, that don't. And the reason why I'm telling you all this is because I believe that a development team is a big, weird, and hopefully a happy family. And we all know that nothing will come out of this guy. <laughs> William, stop copying everybody else's work. And... <laughs> Right, so now that we cracked team, we can move on to leadership. And the same is like the team, it's not about JavaScript. I believe that leadership is also not about fat arrows or red people. What am I talking about? Promise to discover. Friends, I'm talking about this. Okay, this is what happened when I googled leadership. <laughs> it's okay, designer, you, know, you, you, you needed the money. 
<laughs> this is not leadership to me, okay? Nobody wants to be this untitled blue robot running straight, and nobody wants to be like this big red guy conducting or pointing without purpose. And this is not leadership because leadership is not about running faster than everyone else. And it's not about being taller than anyone else. And not about being bolder or redder. And so this is not leadership to me. So what is leadership to me? And this is leadership to me. And it's really logical, right? Because if team is a family, then being a leader is very similar to being a parent. And let's look at this beautiful picture. And some may argue that it's perhaps it's cheesy a little bit, but there's a big, deep truth lying inside. And the truth about being a leader is not about being better than anyone else. It's about making other people better than they were. And to help them to grow. Remember, let it grow. So that's that. But empowering. And the next photo is even more amazing because see how many, how many different aspects need to happen before such a moment can happen. The child is letting go, jumping without knowing what will happen. And she has to have confidence to do that. So the mother probably that developed this confidence in her and to let go herself and to educate and perhaps to, to tell her what to do, how to jump and about the cautions that are there. So this is like the most leadership you can get in my humble opinion. And being a parent, probably understand me. And yeah, it's a nice book. People who don't read Hebrew, it's, it's a book about poop. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Kids love that. And by being a parent, I'm also aware of when this stuff can go wrong, okay? And when we're not strong enough to use those tools, those, those love powers, like you know, support and letting go and letting grow, and sometimes we just let control take over us. And this is how it looks when it goes wrong. And you see, it's like the opposite of letting grow, because look at the kid, he has, he has, he has nowhere to grow, right? It's really physical. So this is what happens when we, we don't let go and we don't control ourselves and we let, let other forces to take over anger and fear and whatnot. So, but it's okay too. Well, not always. And we, we are capable of doing the sleep. That's okay too, we're humans, and we're always dealing with imperfection. So to sum it up, one could say it's actually all about love. And I'm not talking about love in the romantic sense, like you need to make love to your teammates. <laughs> and you can if you want. And not your time. Uh, I'm talking about love in the sense of enlightenment, okay? Because love is what wakes us up in the morning where we have this passion and motivation for the day and sense of purpose and the idea of our relationships. This is really what sparkles us as both people, ordinary people, and, and front-end developers, and it's love that also lets us fall asleep peacefully, with a smile, with acceptance, with acceptance about what happened today, and all the good and bad stuff 
that we've passed. And with acceptance can also come satisfaction of our work and also a sense of happiness. I think this is the way to get any happiness. So love can be fire, passion, and you are all here because of this. You, you wouldn't be here if you don't, if you didn't have it in you. It's love for the web, for HTML, for like the bits and bytes of the code, the, the tech. Even if you hate it sometimes, you actually love it because hate is like the flip side of love. And it's everything. It's everything in your day-to-day -day job, your code buddies and your desk with all the mess <laughs> over the desk and all these stupid things there and users of the interfaces you're building and the coffee machine in the office when you go to take a break and it's midnight pizza season and you're waiting for delivery and the passion about clean code and that small little feeling of satisfaction when you make a commit you know what I'm talking about and it's also love in the sense of like put out the fire to soothe us down and it's love for the biggest part of our parts of our lives, the longer parts of our lives. It's love for the process, for the small baby steps towards a bigger, bigger goal and that we do day after day. And the people around you, and eventually yourself and accepting yourself as you are with the good parts thank you Douglas and the bad parts and everything accepting where you are the situations and who you are and eventually there's nothing you can do except to learn how to be you in time and it's easy and if it sounds familiar to you Yes, probably was the same person that said, all we need is love. And I'm so happy and so honored to be here today on this stage and to channel these great words of wisdom of uh, John Lennon to you. And perhaps it's not even his words, perhaps he also channeled these words from someone else. Maybe that will be the topic of the next year's presentation, Font of Development and God. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to go this far. So, <laughs> Peach can say that, yeah, it's really good. So, I would like to thank the Beatles and thank you.